Today, I'm joined by Sarah Dorn, politics reporter here at Forbes. Sarah, per usual, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Brittany. Thank you for having me. The federal government will reach the debt ceiling as early as this Thursday. Can you break down how we got here? So the government does not take in enough money in taxes and other revenue to fund its operations. So the Treasury Department sells debt to finance government expenses, such as military salaries, interest interest payments to bondholders. But there is a limit imposed by Congress on how much debt the government can borrow. And that limit is currently set at $31.4 trillion. Um, The situation actually happens fairly often where the government is you know, nearing its debt limit. Most recently in December 2021, when Congress agreed to raise the debt ceiling by $2.5 trillion. So right now, um, there is about a six-month window, economists estimate, where the Treasury Department can avoid defaulting on its debt by deploying what are known as extraordinary measures, which is, you know, high-octane terminology, but um, ordinary Americans wouldn't really see huge impacts from this quite yet. And basically, it's just an accounting trick um, that the Treasury Department can use to move money around from certain agencies in order to make payments when they come come due. And um, there's another a, a number of other specific measures that Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen laid out last week in warning that we were nearing the debt ceiling cap. So we can talk about those as well. Yeah, um, we've heard things like extraordinary measures from Janet Yellen, debt nearing the debt ceiling. This all sounds really ominous, but you said it happens fairly often. How bad is this for the typical American? Yes, fairly often in that the U.S. has actually never defaulted um, you know, for failing to raise the debt limit and has raised the cap 78 times since 1960. So it is hard to predict what would actually happen if there was a default, considering it is so unprecedented. But these extraordinary measures, as I explained, are really just accounting maneuvers that the Treasury Department can deploy to stave off, um, you know, a default. And but Yellen has warned that this can only be done for about six months. And some of those extraordinary measures include new investments on government employee retirement funds. She's specifically said she'll suspend investments in the Civil Service Retirement and Disability Fund, along with the Postal Service Retiree Health Benefits Fund. Um, And she's going to suspend several reinvestments as well in the Government Securities Investment Fund and the Federal Employees Retirement system thrift savings plan. So I know that's um, some hefty terminology, but again, there's often some confusion between a debt ceiling fight and a government shutdown. Um, A government shutdown has happened before, most recently uh, in December, 2018, regarding a fight over border wall funding. Um, This is when Congress was looking at passing a full year budget plan, but Again, this has never really happened in the past, so it is hard to say what would occur, but I can I can talk about some of the looming consequences that um, economists are fearing and you know what happened the last time that we neared the debt ceiling cap in 2011. Let's talk about that because we're kind of in a similar boat as we were in 2011. There was a GOP controlled house and there was some playing of politics. So can you, you know, walk us through the similarities here between now and 2011? Yes. In 2011, Republicans had just regained control of the House, as they have this year, and President Obama was in office. Um, So we had a White House that did not want to negotiate. The Biden administration has said we are not going to negotiate on the debt ceiling. But then we had a number of Republicans in the House who wanted to reduce the deficit in exchange for raising the debt ceiling cap. And Republicans have not you know, specifically said um, exactly what their priorities would be in exchange for raising the debt ceiling cap. They have floated reforms to Medicare and Social Security, such as raising the age eligibility. um, And they have said that deficit reduction is a huge priority. McCarthy himself has come out and named that specifically. And then 
we have some more, you know, extreme Republicans who um, those on the far right who are saying that they want to present a bill that would um, just be like a wholesale makeover of President Biden's policies, everything from border wall funding to, you know, COVID funding, Ukraine funding um, in order to pass uh, a debt ceiling cap. So, um, yeah, it's uh, definitely a contingent contentious situation. And given what we saw in the speaker's race, um, we know that Republicans are going to, are willing to go to great lengths to have leadership cave to their demands. Um, and a number of those demands that came up in the speaker's race actually make it harder for Congress to pass a bill that would raise the debt ceiling cap. Um, there's a new rules provision that prohibits Congress from raising the debt ceiling as part of a budget resolution, as they have done in the past, and requires the House to take a vote on uh, raising the, the debt ceiling specifically. I really want to touch on something you just brought up. We covered extensively, you even more so, the really contentious, brutal, historic speakership battle. And we saw that uh, small group of far-right Republicans really holding the gavel hostage from Kevin McCarthy. So do you think that in this situation, their demands are going to hold even more weight? Yes. And like I said, they're, they're already having, you know, some impact on um, the, the debt ceiling negotiations in these in the new rules package that, you know, make it harder for Congress to bring such an issue to the floor. And we've talked about this before, but there is another provision that makes everything um, McCarthy does even riskier because there it's it's called the motion to vacate but he agreed to lower the threshold um for the number of members to bring a motion to vacate which would essentially force a vote to eject the speaker and now any one member can do that previously it had to be a majority of the conference of whatever party is con in control so he is definitely beholden to his conference however i will say that it's not just this coalition of far right Republicans who are demanding these, um, you, you know, deficit reductions, potential changes to Medicare and Social Security in exchange for raising the borrowing cap. Like I said, McCarthy himself has come out and said that deficit deficit reduction is a priority. And you have members from, you know, from both sides of the the conference, um, both pillars, saying that uh, they they want to negotiate with the White House and they're not going to pass a debt ceiling increase without some of their demands being met. Yeah, what you're laying out really sounds like it has the potential to get pretty ugly. But how have Democrats responded? Um, so Democrats have, you know, the White House is saying that obviously Republicans are playing politics with this. Um, very risky issue that, you know, even if we do near um, near the debt ceiling, and this happened in 2011, for the first time ever, the U.S.'s credit score was downgraded, and the stock market plunged the following day. So there could be real effects on the economy, even if Congress does come to agreement. And in 2011, you know, two days before the borrowing cap was set to be reached. Congress did come to an agreement and pass legislation to raise the cap. But, you know, um, Democrats in the administration are coming out with some, um, you know, very alarmist language, if you will, just making it known that this is a serious issue. And I think it's, you know, getting the attention of a lot of Americans. And obviously that has an effect on, you um, the the decisions that the congress makes so we are definitely at an impasse right now the white house and democrats and and republicans have have not um come to much of an agreement i mean there is one uh lofty um you know option if you will that democrats have to bring a res or a legislation to the floor that would raise the borrowing cap but it's 
it's unlikely to happen. It's rarely happened in the past. Um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has talked about how she thinks this is a good option. It's, it's what's known as a discharge peti petition. And it allows Congress to bring legislation to the floor without the committee approving that legislation being brought up for a vote, without leadership bringing it to, a floor, to the floor. However, there's a timing issue and an issue with you know, the number of votes that are required to do that. Currently, given the makeup of the House, Democrats would need five Republicans um, to, you know, defect from their party, essentially, and vote with them to bring this discharge pet petition. And that's going to be a hard fight. And what's more is the petition would have to sit in committee for 30 days. So by the time that they uh, you know, get those Republican votes in the House, those five Republican votes, and then the additional um, 10 that they would need in the Senate uh, to get to the 60 vote threshold to avoid a filibuster, write the legislation, the 30 days in committee, we're already approaching mid-May, um, you know, and, and that could, that's, that's a, that's too close to the deadline. Um, it, we would hope that a discharge petition would not be necessary at that point and the negotiations would be moving forward by then because as i've said economists estimate that the government could reach this so-called x date by mid-year so as as early as june yeah definitely a lot to look out for and as you said we're at an impasse right now but as this all shakes out i hope you come back and give us some updates sarah dorn thank you so much Thank you, Brittany.